This chapter is all about approximations. There are two types of approximations we're going to consider. In this video, we're going to talk about tangent line or linear approximations. Yellowstone Park is not only full of wolves and uh, other animals, but they also have a fairly large population of bisons. And because the park has been pretty well surveyed over the years, we actually have very carefully collected data on the population of bisons dating back from the early 1900s. If you know the population in 1908 and 1909, can we use that information to predict population in further later years? Because we have the data, we will be able to check how close our prediction is to the actual um, real thing. Now, the thing is we only have two points. We're given two points, one in 1908 and one in 1909. So given two points, the only thing we can really construct through them exactly is a line. And it's also the simplest function. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to construct the simplest available function given all the possible information and then see how good of a job that does. Okay, so we're going to denote by B of T the number of bisons in year T, and we will start our countdown at year 1900. And then given those two points, we're going to construct a line and then calculate the values on the line for later years. Now, once again, if it is possible to draw a picture, I always strongly recommend to draw something because it will give you another way to visualize the information that you're given. So here, the countdown starts at zero. So I know the population in years 1908 and 1909, and it is 95 and then 118. So I have these two points that are actually given to me, I know that it's the exact population in those years. What I'm going to do is construct a line through these two points and then use that line to actually calculate how many bison are there in year 1910, 1911, and so on. Now for the line, I need two pieces of information always. I need a slope, for example, and the point. So first of all, let's figure out the slope here. The slope is always rise over run. So I'm going to have 118 minus 95 divided by 9 minus 8, and that will come out to be 23. So my slope here is 23. Okay, so let's label this. The slope is 23. Now, because we are only actually predicting for the years, let's say, as the problem asks, 1910 through 1915, I don't actually need an equation of a line. I can simply add the slope of 23 and calculate the next couple of years. But we will need to compute with, tang uh, with lines in the future. So for the sake of practice, let's actually construct the full equation of this um, Bison line. Okay, so the equation of a line, remember in the slope, point slope form looks like this, where we take y naught and x naught to be some specific point and m is our slope, okay? So plug in everything in, we can pick either of these two points to actually use in the equation of line, doesn't matter which one. So plug in one of them in, we're going to have y minus let's say 95 is equal to slope, which is 23, x minus the corresponding x coordinate, so eight. So this is the equation of my line. Now notice that my notation isn't quite right actually, so I went with a notation for the equation of the line in the most general form, but really I have the number of bison being b of t and my independent variable is t. So if I want to rewrite that as the model, my y is b of t, and my x's are actually called t that stand for time. So this is the equation of the linear model. So notice the key words here being, I wanted to construct a linear function, which meant I constructed a line using the two points that I was given. Now I can use this line to compute the population of bison in future years. Um, so let's say this is the next five years, and I do have the exact data for those years uh, from the surveys collecting from the survey information. And I can use my function here to actually compute what my model now will be predicting. 
right? So this is my model, and it's hopefully going to predict um, something fairly close to the true values for the next few years. Okay, so if we fill in this table with our model, so let me just make sure I label this. This is using the model um, that we've just calculated, plus 95. And we can see, comparing the numbers, that they're actually fairly close. There's no information in 1914. But all of the numbers that we've estimated with are pretty close to the numbers that have been measured. And we can see from the graph here, so my line here was constructed through the points 1908, 1909. And we can see that it models fairly well for the next five years. But then something happens and the line, my model, is no longer really representing the data all that well. So what are our choices for years that are further away from 1915? Well, I could recompute a new line at the future points. So for example, I could use the points of, let's say, 1915 and 1916 to compute a new line. And that line looks like it will model the next 15, 20 years much better. And that is key with linear approximation. And in fact, that's the key with any approximation. An approximation is going to do a very good job, hopefully, near the point where you've picked it. So we've used the years of 1908 and 1909 to model, which means that our approximation would do a good job approximating the population near 1908 and 1909. But the further we move away from those years, the worse our model becomes. And that is going to be the case in general. No matter what function I have, so let's say I, am try I have a function that looks like this. If I construct a tangent line at some point on that function, my tangent line looks like the function near the point of tangency. So if I zoom in around here, you can see how my tangent line really mimics what my curve looks like. Here, the curve and the line look really, really similar. But the further I move away from the point of tangency, the more different the line and the curve look. So the closer you stay to your point of tangency, the better your approximation is going to be. And this in itself is a very powerful idea though, because it means that no matter what curve you give me, no matter how curvy it is, I can approximate it using a line. Now let's take a look at one particular example. We're going to try to approximate square root of two. We will start by sketching the square root of x function. Um, if you don't remember what it looks like, it's always helpful to plug in some points. So square root of zero is zero, square root of one is one, and the next nice point that we can plug in is square root of four, which is going to be two. So this right here is my function root x, and I'm trying to approximate root two, which is the y-coordinate of this point that corresponds to x equals two right there. Now, the idea being is that I'm going to try to approximate it without using a calculator. Um, so I have to construct a tangent line somewhere near two and then use the value uh, at x equals two on that line as opposed to on my curve which will produce a reasonable approximation as long as my tangent line to begin with was constructed close to two. So for example, if I construct a tangent line somewhere here, so let's say at like, I don't know, 0.3 or something, right? Then at two, the value on my tangent line is up here. So that doesn't look too great because clearly there's a pretty big discrepancy between the value that I want, which is down here, and the value that I get on my tangent line, which is up there. Okay, now let's think about where should I construct my tangent line that will produce a better result. So graphically, once again, the closer to two, the better. However, there's other considerations to keep in mind. So this is my exact value that I'm trying to approximate. Root two up here. Let's write out analytically or algebraically what it is that we're trying to construct. So my tangent line will be y minus y naught mx minus x naught. 
So again, I'm trying to construct it somewhere near to, but I'm also trying to construct it at a point where I can calculate everything at. So a question that students usually ask is, well, why not construct it at two? And the problem there is if I construct a tangent line at two, then in my tangent line equation here, x is going to be two, and y is going to be root two. But I don't know what root two is. That's the exact point, that's the exact value I'm trying to approximate. So I can't construct anything at two because I'm unable to calculate root two. So here we need to think of a point near two where I can figure out the exact value of the function. I can't figure out the exact value at two. What other points near two are there that I can calculate the square root of x exactly at? Well, there's a couple. I can calculate the square root exactly at one and I can calculate the square root exactly at four. Both are pretty near two, but one is closer. So I am going to be constructing my tangent line at one. And you can see how this value, then if I plug in two into my approximate line, so this is my approximation, then the value that corresponds to that, this is my approximate value, value is pretty close to my exact value. Like they're barely very far apart, right? And that's of course because one is close to two. So now let's actually figure out exactly what that approximate value is. So in my equation now, I have picked a point x equals one, and then the corresponding point of y is square root of one, which is one and I am able to calculate it, that's important. If you ever have to use a calculator in your linear approximation process, it means you've done something wrong. For example, you did not pick a point nice enough. Now, for the slope here, for this m, that's the slope, and that's the slope of the tangent line, which of course is the derivative. So I'm taking the derivative of the function y equals root x, which is x to the power one half, so taking the derivative of that is one over two x to the power negative one half, which is um, square root of x on the bottom. And I am calculating that at x equals one. So don't forget to plug in your point. Your slope has to be an actual number, not a function. So plugging in one into my slope gives me y equals one half, which means that the equation of my line now becomes y minus root one, which is one, equals the slope, which is one half, x minus one. Excellent, so this is the equation of my line right here, okay? And now, of course, I'm not interested in the entire line. I am interested in this point on the line right there that corresponds to x equals two. So I'm going to plug in x equals two, plug in x equals two to figure out what the corresponding y value is. Okay, and solving this will give me y equals 1.5. So that means that this is my approximate value for the square root of two. If you use your calculator now, you will notice that square root of two is approximately 1.41, which is pretty close to 1.5. And all we've done is pick a nice point, construct a tangent line, and calculate its value at that point. So for that amount of work, this is a pretty good approximation. Now, in general, this is the formula that describes a linear approximation. It's the exact same formula we've just seen for the tangent line, but written slightly differently. So the way they, we wrote it on the last slide was like this. So you pick a nice point, nice point A or X naught in this case, the nice point is nice in two ways. First of all, you can evaluate the function value at it exactly. And second of all, it's close to your point of interest. So in this case, let's say this is your X value of interest. And then you're constructing your tangent line at this point A, nice point right here. So there is a nice point with, for example, whole numbers as um, coordinates near x and you've constructed yourself a tangent line. That means now that this is your tangent line approximation whereas this is your curve or your function. So the next step in the process is or was to go up to your 
function value and to your approximation value to figure out which one is which. So the value that corresponds to the chosen x on your function is the exact value. And the value that corresponds to that x value on the tangent line is the approximation. Once again, a graph here is really important because it tells you, for example, in this case, that your approximation is going to be an under approximation because in this case, your tangent line and the points on it lie below the curve. Um, the book always also gives you this formula, which they call linearization. Please do not memorize it. The linear uh, approximation process is exactly what we've just covered. So there is really no need to memorize this formula, which all it is, is we've just moved this one term over to the right-hand side. However, what this formula does say is that the function value at a point x is approximately equal to the tangent line value at some point A, and the closer A is, the better your approximation is going to be. Now, because in this section we're going to be working so extensively with equations of lines, and in particular equations of lines tangent to a curve, let's do a couple of examples of simply finding equations of lines. So here we have find an equation of a line of slope 5 that goes through the point negative 1 and 4. Notice that there's no actual calculus involved in this particular example, so please pause the video and see if you can figure this out for yourself using your pre-calculus skills. So let's think about what information we have. We have a slope and we have a point. As I've already mentioned, one of the most useful forms of a line that we will use is the point-slope form. Now, of course, here, you can immediately see that slope being equal to five, to 5 will go in to the value for m, whereas the point being negative 1 and 4 will fill in the x and y coordinates of the particular point that we're trying to use. So in this case, x0 is negative 1 and y0 is 4. Once we enter all of this information in, we end up with y minus 4 is equal to 5, x minus minus 1, so plus 1. Now, generally, you can leave the line in this form, and I'm even going to make it very clear here. You can leave it as is, um, unless you're very specifically asked for a particular form of a line. This is an equation of a line. There's the x, there's the y, and there is a variety of other numbers around it. If you really wanted a slope intercept form, so y equals mx plus b, you can of course manipulate this equation to look like that. So we could here open up the brackets on the right, 5x plus 5, move over all of the constants and combine them together. So moving 4 over to the side will result with plus 4 on the right, plus 5 plus 4 is plus 9. So this is the exact same line but the equation here is in the slope-intercept form. If we were to sketch this line, the slope-intercept form will probably be the easiest to actually sketch with, but otherwise the form of the actual equation of a line doesn't really matter. But for a quick refresher of the slope-intercept form sketching, so it's called slope-intercept because this value outside here in the mx plus b, the b value stands for the intercept. So my intercept is 9. There's this point here. And then, of course, my slope is still 5. So I can sketch my line with the slope 5. Notice that I'm not actually marking any other points on the x or y axis. I'm just doing a very qualitative sketch. Okay, here it is. If you wanted to sketch this line, this is what it is. Let's take a look at another example. Here, we're asked to find an equation of a line, but now we're using calculus terminology to provide some information about the line. So the line needs to be a tangent to this particular curve at this particular point. So how do we translate the tangency into the line language? Remember that tangent means that the line's slope is equal to the derivative of the function at that point. So the line that we're interested in has the slope that's equal to the derivative 
of our function, so in this case x squared plus 3x minus 7, at the point where we're actually interested in. Now, this is something I can already calculate. So the derivative at that point. Well, let's take a derivative. So I have 2x plus 3, and the derivative at 2 is going to be 2 times 2 plus 3. So if my arithmetic doesn't betray me, it's equal to 7. Excellent. So what about my actual tangent line? Let's see what information I already have to put in there and what I am potentially missing. So from here, the slope is 7, so that's going to go in for the slope. And then I also need the x and y coordinates of a particular point on the curve. Now I have the x coordinate that's equal to 2, but I don't have the y coordinate quite yet. How can I figure that out? Well, I have the actual equation of my curve, so I can plug in x equals 2 into here to figure out the corresponding y coordinate. So let's do a little off to the side work here. At x equals 2, we have that y is equal to 2 squared plus 3 times 2 minus 7. And if we do all of this arithmetic together, we should end up with 3. And if we don't end up with 3, then let me know. I might have made an arithmetic mistake here. So that means that I have a 3 here, okay? Once I plug everything in, what do I end up with? y minus 3 is equal to the slope, which is 7x minus 2. And again, if you wish, you can open up the brackets, but I'm going to leave them as is because I don't particularly care what form the equation of my line actually is in. So now, back to our approximation examples. Let's take a look at this one here. We're asked to approximate square root of 4.1. We're asked to then sketch the approximation and the exact graph and conclude whether our approximation is an overestimate or an underestimate. So first things first, we have to figure out what function we're approximating and at which point. Let's take a look at the actual thing that we would like to approximate. Square root of 4.1 becomes fairly clear that we're trying to approximate square root of x function. The point we're trying to approximate it at is 4.1, okay? So the function, let's say take a function y equals square root of x, the point that we would like to approximate it at is 4.1. What is a nice point near 4.1 where we can compute without a calculator the square root exactly. Well, in this case, it's pretty clear that the point is 4. Okay, so the nice point near, nice in quotation marks because, again, not official language here, nice point near 4.1 where we can compute the function exactly is going to be 4. Okay, it's near the point, near 4.1, near the point of interest, and it is something where we can compute the square root exactly. Perfect. So now we have to think about what it means to actually approximate it. Let's start by sketching the graph of what we have and what we are hoping to have. Okay, so my function is square root of x. The square root of x we've seen before looks like this. I would like to think about what that function looks like near 4 and near 4.1. So this is why it said mind the scale here, because if I actually draw to scale, I'm not going to be able to actually see anything on the graph. I'm going to exaggerate the scale here so I can actually know what it is that I have going on. So I know the function's exact value at 4, because if I take square root of 4, I'm going to get a 2. What I really want to know is the function's value at 4.1. Okay, so this point right here on the function at 4.1 is going to be the exact value. However, I cannot easily take square root of 4.1. So what I'm going to do, because this is fairly close, I know that 
this is the x and y coordinates of that point, and I also know that I'm able to construct a tangent line at this point to the curve. Okay? And then the tangent line's value at 4.1 will be quite close to my exact value because 4 is close to 4.1 and therefore here the tangent line is still mimicking the behavior of the function fairly closely. If I take it further, way further down, let's say at like 9.1, right? By then the line and the function will diverge and will not look like each other. But in the neighborhood of 4, and in particular at 4.1, the line still looks a lot like my function. So this point right here on the line is going to be my approximation. And it looks like because 4 and 4.1 go near, it's going to be a good one. So this is the graphical representation of the situation. So we've actually completed the second part of this question. Now we actually have to figure out the equation of this tangent line, and in particular, the actual coordinate that corresponds to x equal 4.1 on that line. Okay, so I need to figure out what the tangent line equation is. And because we've just done that, in the previous slide with a different function though, I encourage you to pause the video here and construct yourself an equation of a tangent line to y equals root x at the point 4. Okay, so what we have is we're going to start with the exact same equation as always and see what information we do and do not have. So this is the equation of my any line and in particular this tangent line that I'm looking for. I know that my x value is going to be 4, and therefore the corresponding y value is going to be root 4 or 2. You know what? Let me write this down. Root 4, which is equal to 2. Next up, the value that I don't know is this slope right here. Okay, So this slope is still an unknown. However, what I do know is slope is equal to the derivative of my function at the point. So at x equals 4. So now all I need to do is figure out what is the derivative of my function at x equals 4. Okay, so my function is root x, which means that my derivative, if we go through the power rule, is 1 over 2 root x. And so my derivative at 4, I plug in 4 here, I'm going to get root 4, which is 2. 2 times 2 on the bottom is 4. So overall, I get 1 over 4, okay? And that is going to be my slope right here. Excellent. I'm in good shape. I have the entire equation of my tangent line. y minus 2 is equal to 1 fourth the slope, x minus 4. This is the equation of a tangent line. And what I want to know is the actual y-coordinate that corresponds to the x-coordinate being 4.1. Now I have the entire equation of this line, so of course I can simply plug in 4.1 in for x to figure out the corresponding y. Okay, so plug in x equals 4.1. What do we get? I get y minus 2 is 1 quarter 4.1 minus 4. If I open up all the brackets and move all the things around, I will solve for y being 2 and a little bit. So 2.025. 2 and this is now my estimate. Okay? Now, the other reason... Oh, I guess I can put this on the graph as well. So here is my point on the line that is an approximation of the point on my graph at x equals 4.4. The graph also makes it very clear that the entire tangent line lies above the actual curve, which means that this estimate is in fact going to be an overestimate. You can see how this point lies above the exact value on the function, so no matter what, this is going to be higher than the actual value. So here I have that this isn't just an estimate, I can actually be more precise in saying that this is going to be an overestimate. 
I really should include a sentence description here of what I just said about the fact that the tangent line lies above the curve, which makes for an overestimation, not underestimation. Let's do another example that is essentially just like that, but with a different function. Because the method is going to be identical, please pause the video here and do this for yourself. You already have all the necessary tools to do this yourself, and this will simply give you another way to exercise your abilities. So I have cube root of 9 here. In linear approximation, that means that I am trying to approximate the function cube root of x at the value of 9. So my function is cube root of x. And now I have to think of a nice point that I can evaluate my function at. So my cube root of x, somewhere I can compute it, that's near 9, but where I know the exact value of the function. Now, cube root is the opposite of cubing something. So 1 cube is 1, 2 cubed is 8, which means that the cube root of 8 is 2. Well, that's pretty convenient because obviously 8 is near 9, so that is going to be my nice point. So my nice point is going to be x equals 8, which is close to 9, and I know that cube root of 8 is equal to 2. So it's quite a lovely point to be computing near. Um, and again, it doesn't really matter if you decide to go through the algebraic manipulations first or draw a graph. I prefer to draw a graph as soon as possible. So I have some idea, a graphical intuition of what is going on. So the function I need to draw is cube root of x, which is my snaky shape, but sideways. This is not very sneaky. There we go. Much better. Okay. And I know that I will be looking at this function near 8 and 9. So again, the scale here isn't um, to actually be precise with the scale, but rather to come up with a picture that will have meaningful information on it. So at 8, is where I can compute the exact value, and it's going to be equal to 2. So this is the exact value of my function, which also means that because I can compute it exactly, this is where I can construct a tangent line to the curve. But where I want to know the value is at 9. So this is the value I want. And by computing it on my tangent line, whose equation I'm about to find, I can approximate it. So this is going to be my approximation. And again, I can see that because x uh, being 8 is pretty close to x being 9, my approximation, my tangent line, is still going to be pretty close to my curve, and so my approximation is going to be good. By drawing the graph, before doing any calculations, I can already see that this approximation is going to be an overestimate because, as in the previous example, the line lies above the curve. Okay. Now, going through the calculations in the exact same way, I'm going to construct a tangent line at x equals 8 because that's where I can actually compute it. At no point in the calculations should you have to use a calculator. If you're using calculator to compute cube root of 9, then you're defeating the purpose of actually approximating it using a line, okay? So y minus y naught is equal to m x minus x naught. I already know my values for x naught and y naught. My x naught is 8. My y naught is cube root of 8, which is 2. And now the only thing I still need to figure out is my slope, which of course is the derivative of cube root of x at x equals 8. All of my calculations of the tangent line will be happening at the nice point at 8 because that's where I can perform all the calculations exactly. Okay, So if I take a derivative, um, I will provide you here with the final answer but not the calculations. You should be able to go through them by yourself, no problem. The slope the derivative value of the cube root of x at 8 is going to be 1 over 12. Okay, So then, plugging this information in, my tangent line becomes y minus 2 is equal to 1 12th x minus 8. 
okay? This is equation of my tangent line, and my approximation is going to be the y value that corresponds to x equals 9. So as my last step here, I will plug in x equals 9, y minus 2 is 1 twelfth, 9 minus 8, and now I can simply solve this for y. y will turn out to be 2.0833333, so 3 repeated forever. And again, from the graph, I already know that this is an overestimate because the tangent line lies on top of the function. Let me write this out here fully because the tangent line lies above the function itself. Okay, so the linear approximation method always involves one function, a nice point, a tangent line, and the plugging in of the point nearby it to actually figure out what the corresponding approximation is. Draw the graph. It is very convenient to both figure out what is going on in the situation, and it's essentially the only way to figure out if you have yourself an over or an underestimate. Now, for the last example in this class, we're going to consider a function and try to apply linear approximation without knowing what the actual function is, except for having the graph of it. Okay, so here I don't have a formula for the function, but my method doesn't change. I just need to think of what I'm doing graphically. So here's the graph of the function f of x. Suppose you want to approximate f of 2. So that means I am looking to approximate um, this value right here, right? This is my exact value. And I would like to somehow figure out what it actually equals. Now, of course, I can eyeball it and be like, well, it's about 3.4. But I would like to use some other information on the graph to actually figure out what this can be. What point would you choose to draw a tangent line at and why? Well, remember that the point where you choose to draw your tangent line at has to be a nice point in the sense that I should be able to know the function value at that point exactly. So looking at my function here, I can see that at point 1, it's exactly on the grid line or appears to be exactly on the grid line. So this seems like a pretty good nice point. Also, 1 is fairly close to 2, so this should provide me with a reasonable enough approximation. Okay, so that's essentially going to be my justification here. Looks like at x equals 1, the graph goes through the y equals 1. So the graph is at y equals 1, so I know its exact value. And 1 is close to 2. So we will draw the tangent line at x equals 1. Draw the tangent line at x equals 1 and compute with the tangent line at x equals 1. Okay, so let's say I sketch the tangent line at x equals 1 here. Let's say this is my tangent line. Now, if I am approximating at x equals 2, that means that I will be taking the value on the tangent line at x equals 2 as my approximation. Now, I can already see from the graph that this is not going to be a great approximation because it's actually pretty far from the function itself. But it's kind of the best I can do because this is my only exact point. It just, in this case, it turned out that 1 and 2 aren't close enough when it comes to this function. It has quite a steep increase between the two values, and so it deviates from its tangent line fairly quickly. But again, this is the best that we can do. Sketch the tangent line for the linear approximation. Done. Mark the exact value. Uh, of f of 2 and the value of the linear approximation, done and done. Is it an overestimate or an underestimate? Justify. Well, I can see that the tangent line here, and therefore all of its values lie below the function, which means that my approximation will be an underestimate. Okay, let's record that. It's an underestimate because... Okay, so we always have to justify why that's the case. Simply staying, stating it as a fact isn't really going to get you very far in math. It's an underestimate because tangent line lies below the function. 
and therefore all of its values lie below the function, including the value for x equals 2. All right, so let's take a look at what else we're asked to compute here. Suppose the slope of the tangent line at x equals 1 is equal to 1. We are asked to approximate f of 2 using this information and the given graph. Um, I just realized this, sh this is a typo. This should be the slope is 1 half. That seems a little bit more reasonable with what the graph looks like. Okay, so make sure you correct that typo. So we're going through the exact same linear approximation uh, process that we did before. We're simply having to draw some of the information from the graph and not from the equation of the formula. So what do I have here? I know from my graph on the previous slide that at x equals 1, y was also equal to 1. That's my nice point right here. So I know these two values. This is 1 and this is 1. And I'm told here that the slope is equal to 1 half. So I know all of this information here. So that means I can see that the equation of my tangent line is y minus 1 is equal to 1 half x minus 1. Now, this is the equation of the entire tangent line, but of course I want to approximate my function at 2, which means that I need to plug in x equals 2 into the equation of my tangent line and then figure out the corresponding y. So I have y minus 1 is equal to 1 half, x is 2 now, so 2 minus 1, which if we solve for y will give me 1.5. So that means that at x equals 2, the y-coordinate on the tangent line is 1.5. Let's confirm this with the graph. At x equals 2, the y-value on the tangent line is approximately 1.5. That seems quite reasonable indeed with what I'm seeing on the graph here. Okay? That's it. This is our approximation. And from the previous part, we already know that this is an underestimate. The last part of the question here asks what general shape, so we are thinking not just about this graph, but in more generality, of a graph will result in a linear approximation producing an underestimate or an overestimate. So remember that in order to produce the underestimate, it means that the tangent line lies below the function itself. Oops. And in order to produce the overestimate, the tangent line itself in its entirety and near the tangent point lies above the function. So what possible function shapes will produce one of these cases? So I need to have that the tangent line lies below the function, which will happen when the function looks something like this. Right, that's my tangent line, lies below. In a similar way, maybe it's sort of the same shape, but decreasing. Okay, so in this case too, I can see that if this is the point that I'm approximating things at, my tangent line will lie below it. The tangent line lying above are going to be shapes that look like this. So my tangent line here lies above the function and here, my tangent line also lies above the function. So later in the course, we will actually um, classify these shapes as one kind of type and these shapes as a different kind of type. But we're already seeing the distinction in their behavior when it comes to tangent lines and the production of the underestimate in this first case and overestimate in the second case.